Hello, we are back, and this is uh, Idea Craft, whatever the heck you want to call it. We share ideas about how we do stuff in Minecraft. And I neglected some very important things last time, because I just was like, oh, let's go down a hole, let's go down a hole and have some fun time. Happy fun times for everybody, right? Wrong. We need to go over combat and mining, don't we? So, you already know how to mine. You should know how to mine. You should just hold down and click. Got that, right? Dumb, dumb, dumb. Well, some people like to have ideas of where they go when they are mining. See, my torches are all sort of just splayed around everywhere. That's me, me style, that's how I do things. I don't like them on walls. Get some closer walls, great, right? You can see where everything is. Stuff spawns on the floor, not in the walls. Mobs, angry stuff, mean stuff, all sorts of stuff spawns on the floor, if you can't tell. I've done a little bit of mining, gathered some materials and such, whatever. People put torches on walls, is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, for the most part, you can do simple thing, which will always tell you where you are. Simple mining technique with your torches, get out of here so I can see, actually see you, is place them all on one side of the wall. So, say you're going down, you're always going to place torches on the right side of the wall. Right? So when you're going down, going down deeper, your torches are going to be on the right side, always going to know they're on the right side and you know where they are right 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 is right right is right that is a very simple mind techniques people use the technique I use so I can place my torches wherever and it is relevant for the most part uh, is I like to use torches and redstone torches I don't have any redstone torches haven't found any redstone I, mean, I ha actually haven't explored too far beyond this beginning area. Sorry, I hear a skeleton. I know sounds are on this time. I'm sorry about last time. I'm breathing the speed of light over here because there's a lot to cover. Um, but yeah, torches and redstone torches. I use torches for most general just lighting, making sure nothing can possibly spawn near me so I'm safe when I am doing my shit. Uh, redstone torches I use to mark important pathways back to the surface so here I'd probably place a redstone torch right about there so I know I have to go up stairs and when I got up the stairs I'd probably place another one up here just so it, at important junctions pretty much so I'm like okay so I got to here I don't know where to go now oh I'm gonna place a redstone torch here that way is way back home and I remember because I watched the last recordings a couple times just to see what I was doing because I was a big idiot and that's about it right so, I do redstone torches. Redstone torches, for me, tell me where I'm going. Otherwise, I just place torches on the floor, so I'm getting maximum use out of my light source and keeping most stuff from spawning using the least amount of torches. That is just me. Okay? Okay. So, last time, I went over zombies for like half a second. And what I said was true. It is very true. You hit one zombie, you're going to get more zombies coming towards you. And it is more true for the higher difficulties. So let's look at options real quick here. I'm on normal difficulty and it's unlocked. If I increase that to hard, more enemies are more uh, zombies, sorry, more zombies are going to come towards me from a longer distance when I hit a zombie. That is basic mechanics of zombies. Pretty simple, right? All right. Good times, right? Happy times. Next is skeletons. Next mob in Minecraft skeletons. I uh, did it last time, I don't know if you noticed, because I just kind of did it and didn't say anything about it. Uh, skeletons will try to shoot you with arrows, pretty obvious, right? They have a bow, they're not going to slap you with the bow, they're going to slap you with the arrows. But to get you to you, they will actually circle around corners. So if you stand around corners, say skeleton's right here on the gravel, he's going to try and shoot at me and try and, you know, kill me, right? That was a misclick, I didn't mean to do that. Come back here. Um, he's going to try and shoot at me. So if I go around this corner, he's going to walk up to me and still try to shoot me. And that's when you strike. That is when you do the ambush, ha ha ha, ha trap kind of thing, and kill him. But they don't know better. They're just going to keep trying to get around corners to shoot you. So if you, like, circle around a tree, say, above ground, or just keep circling around corners and underground, you they'll just constantly pull themselves in closer to you so you can kill them. Uh, next mob, you probably should definitely go over because we counted several last time, was creepers. Creepers are devious bastards, and we do not like them. Why? Because they sneak up on you. 
you could be over here mining this dirt wall. This is not dirt, but you could be mining this dirt wall, and Creeper will sit behind this corner, you know, just waiting for you to go business, wait for you to mine, and then he'll run up behind you and bombard you. If you look in the direction of a creeper, say there's a creeper up there on that block, if you look that way, he's just going to wait there. He's not going to move. He's going to wait there. He's going to derp around. And as soon as you turn away, he's going to run up on you and try to surprise you. That is how they work. They are very clever and very well programmed. I am happy about that. It's not a bad thing in the least bit. But that's pretty much creepers. They just sneak up on you and... That's why I like to run around like a madman, like you saw last time. I ran around like a madman, lighting everything up, because I had to be sure where the creepers were. I wanted to be sure I wasn't going to get bombarded by a creeper. Hello? And next mob, hello, thank you for introducing yourself, is a spider. Now, eh, spiders are very interesting. Oh, hi, Mr. Creeper. Uh, skeleton, skeletons? Spiders. Spiders. Those are spiders. Spiders are interesting as they can actually become non-hostile if you get enough light sources around them. So when it gets to daytime above ground, this little bugger will just kind of just screw off and you'll be like, oh, it's light out. I don't really care. And as you saw there, spiders have the ability to climb flat surfaces. They can't climb around blocks above them. They can only climb up the walls. So if you put a block above him, he's going to get stuck on said block, and he's going to sit there like a derp and try to get to you still. But that is when you strike. That is an easy way to, you know, get them stopped. So if I had a spider down here to try to climb up this wall, i just run up here, get him stuck on this block, just wail on him until he's dead. Sound good? Sound happy? Sound great? Um... Those are all the basic mobs from Razor Minecraft. Let's go over another ones that are sort of newer. That we can encounter in the old world. Stick to the old world stuff for now. Uh, slimes. Slimes are always hostile. Yes, very always hostile. But there are different sizes. So there's some that are smaller than this block. There's some about two blocks tall. There's some even bigger. And probably about three or four blocks. I don't know about how tall, how wide, but it's about that size, you know? But, uh, they are always hostile. They always jump towards you, try to hurt you. But the thing is, only the two block and four block size ones will actually do any damage to you. The small ones that are smaller than a block, they can't hurt you. They'll just jump at you and move your character slightly when you're trying to, you know, do your thing. But they all drop slime balls, so you don't have to worry about saving for the big guys. Big guys and small guys all drop the slime balls. <laughs> Sorry, I need to catch my breath here because I'm just running on with all my words. And I'm just kind of, you know, going over the stuff now when there isn't anything to go over it with. Which is, you know, my folly. I'm sorry, guys, I did that to you last time, but that uh, was just how I did. And I'm terribly sorry. So sorry. Um, other new stuff. Uh, encountered last time, which we definitely go over, is a witch. Now, witches are very, very dangerous, and you should be, I'd say, martly well prepared in what you're going to go into when you encounter a witch. Witches throw potions. I can't remember what order it is. They have a set order of potions they are going to go through, harmless and helpful to them. Harm, harmless to, goddamn, harmful to you, help, helpful to them. So they have buffs and debuffs, pretty much, kind of thing. So they will, I don't know the exact order that they do it, I think they drink a speed potion first, or something of that sort, effect, something to boost their speed or something or another, and that's the first one they go for. The, when they see a character, that is what they're going to do first, they're going to say, hold on, let me he sit here and eat something, and then they're going to come after you. First thing they're going to throw after you, always and forever, is going to be a poison potion poison potions they throw last longer depending on how close it is to you when it hits but they always have a certain duration you know that they're supposed to last so you know staying keeping your distance from which fine strategy as long as you can actually hit them and kill them that is perfectly fine strategy you know snipe at them with a bow from an area they can't even get close to you with the potions and kill them that way only problem with that is when you get them to low enough health, they are start drinking healing potions. They will heal themselves, so they they'll drink regeneration potions and healing potions, so they don't die, pretty much. 
Uh, I'm sort of just going around here, lighting the area up while I talk about this stuff. So, if you're not fast enough, they will just heal up and ignore all the damage you just did to them, which is very bad, because that means they're just going to throw more potions at you. And usually my strategy with witches, which is which is which is which usually works for me is I just charge in like crazy maniac with my sword swinging and do as much damage as possible within the shortest amount of time because that's going to be what you know overrides all their healing and all the damage they're doing to you. Oh, sorry, no one there in the lag spike. I don't know what that was about. But it, you gotta rush them. You gotta rush them down and beat them down into the ground so they can't keep throwing potions at you like assholes. Um, let's see. I'm, I think we got one more on the surface. And I want to say it's the Enderman, which is, well, obviously the Enderman. Because Enderman is very... Well, he's very prominent in Minecraft now. He wasn't so much there before in beta. Oh, the other days. Good old days. But he was, he's very new and everybody will like him, right? Because he's interesting in the way he behaves. He's docile, he's not hostile, he doesn't know attack anything. Until you look at him. If you put your cursor, the center of your cursor, that little crosshair I have on my screen, you put the center of that on him for, like, I want to say a second, maybe two seconds. Then he starts freaking out. That's when he goes, holy crap, what are you doing to me? What do you want? You want my purse? You want me? I don't know you. I don't know you. And then he starts charging you. And then he's gonna, he does a lot of damage, and he can teleport. So he can go from like where this torch is to that torch, or behind you, or in front of you, somewhere in your vicinity, and still charge at you. He wants, to, he wants you dead at that point. We're running a little bit low on time. We're going to go to the last few things about Enderman. Uh, Endermen can be hurt by water. They get hurt in rainfall and they get hurt by bodies of water. If they fall into a body of water while they are fighting you, they will completely go docile. They'll be like, oh, reset. I'm just going to go this way and leave you alone. It doesn't happen all that often, but if you're fighting one in the rain, don't expect to finish him off because he's probably just going to screw off and you aren't going to get Ender Pearl. Um, last thing about Endermen, which makes them incredibly easy to fight. They are three tall. They can always and only ever be three blocks tall. So if you make a shelter that is two blocks tall, they cannot get underneath it. They cannot hurt you. You can just wail on them, make a happy day, get easy kills and experience, right? Happy stuff. And that is pretty much it. We went through a lot there because I skipped a whole lot when I was making the recording. Sorry about that. And I covered as much as I could this time around. But that is pretty much it. That is how I do mining. I know it might drive you crazy that I put my torches all over the place for those who do the torch on the right side of the wall. For all those who watch Paul Source Jr., I guess I'm going to reference him because he is the reason I got into Minecraft. And I'll put a link to his channel in the description because he is an awesome guy. And I very much and I'll appreciate everything that he's done for our Minecraft community and, you know, inspiring me to do this kind of stuff. Um... But, yeah, that's his strategy. I know people watch him and think he's great and awesome. And I think he's great and awesome, too. Um, I, I digress. I digress a lot. I do that a lot, and I'm going to continue to do that because that is who I am. Um, that is pretty much it. All combat basics. Oh, bows, if you don't know. Shorter you hold it down, less damage it does, least distance it goes, longer you hold it down. It flies, and it'll do a lot of damage. That's what that little trail behind it is. That trail is saying, I'm hurting you and I want you dead. Uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, and swords, left click swing, right click guard. It takes off half damage from all mob sources. So creepers and that sort of thing. Zombies. So if a creeper's about to explode on you and you didn't know he was behind you, switch to your sword real quick. Uh, press whatever hotkey it is. Press four, boom. Pull out sword, guard, and you'll take half the damage from the explosion. I'm out of time here. I am glad I an idiot last time and got to cover all this stuff with you this time and cl uh, clean up a little bit more space around here. Next time, I swear, we're going to go deeper. We're going deeper. We're going to get all the good stuff. We're going to get all the loots and be happy, happy people. Uh, yeah, I got conversion room out here. Um, uh, yeah, uh, that does, about, does it for me. Wish you all luck until next time. I'll see you next time.